Hello, Buckeye Nation, and welcome to Buckeye Football Fangirl. My name is Lisa, and I'm the gal behind this show. And today I am joined by a very special guest. So someone who started as a fellow podcaster on Scarlet and Great, which is a great channel. You guys should check it out on YouTube, who soon became a very good friend and is now my boyfriend, Corey. Welcome to the show. Wow, you're admitting that in public now. How are you doing? I am. I am. <laughs> I didn't have to bribe her too much, folks, but she's finally admitting it. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm preparing for a massive hurricane that's headed right at me. So, yeah. Granted, I'm on the East Coast, not the West Coast, but the trajectory has it headed right at me. Prayers uh -huh. for those on the Tampa area or St. Petersburg or oh, Sarasota. I'm, yes. I'm not sh they don't know where it's going to hit, but um, it's supposed to be a cat. Again, they're guessing between two and four. They just don't know. Mm -hmm. um, there's expected to be somewhat of a shear that will lessen the strength of the hurricane before it hits. Hopefully, that's what happens. And uh, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Tampa's looking at 110 mile an hour winds, probably minimum coming Woo! out. So. Mm -hmm. Yikes. That's insane. Yeah, definitely thoughts and prayers with everybody down there who's going to be dealing with that. So. If anybody's tuning in and doesn't know, Corey lives in Florida. Uh, mm -hmm. Earned him the nickname Florida Corey or Floco on Scarlet mm -hmm. and Grey. That, that's my hip hop and name. Yeah. His, oh yeah, that's right. His hip hop name. <laughs> so yeah, he's going to be dealing with some of that storm that's passing through. So definitely, Corey, mm -hmm. I hope you're able to stock up on all those non-perishables, all the water, all the gas that you need before this hits and that you stay safe as well as everybody else down there. Yeah, we'll see if I want to leave or not. Yeah, yeah, definitely play it safe with that too. <laughs> maybe so, uh, maybe I'll we'll evacuate to uh, the LA area. I mean, he is into hip hop, what can I say? <laughs> exactly. No other reason, just my hip hop heritage. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. I was going to say, too, I know there's a lot of other Buckeye fans in Florida. So if anybody else is watching this and you're down there, I hope that you stay safe. Hopefully, you know, my ultimate hope is the storm is not going to be as bad as they say and that it kind of blows through without doing tons of damage. I wanted to jump in a little bit into our Buckeye backstory. So I'm a huge mm -hmm. Buckeye fan. I bleed scarlet and gray. I am also a fan who never takes her scarlet and gray glasses off. <laughs> so everything for me is, you know, about pure love for these Buckeyes. It's really hard for me to see things objectively sometimes. But Corey, I know on the flip side of that, you kind of balance that out and you are much more of a grounded fan. Yes, I am. Um, that being said, not to say I don't have my own bias, obviously. Uh, although I have to admit, I almost revoked your, your Buckeye fangirl card yesterday. Uh, Ugh, you were, she, I know. She, our own Buckeye football fangirl was late to the game and against Iowa and had yeah, me texting her updates. And uh, <laughs> Thank you for those. Those were my lifeline. <laughs> and she was telling me she probably had to leave before the game. She didn't end up ending up. That's what she kept her current. She didn't have to leave before the game was over, but she was talking Thank about she might you, have to. Thank you, Iowa, for shortening the game by yeah. running the ball. <laughs> so uh, I didn't have to revoke the card, but she was close. <laughs> yeah, I ended up missing that that whole first quarter and just mm -hmm. hearing about, you know, Mecca and Lupa's first touchdown via text from Corey. So thank you, Corey, for keeping me updated with that until I was able to get in front of my screen and actually watch the Buckeye action yesterday, which I don't know. I was pretty happy with that game. What were your thoughts about that game yesterday? Um, up and down. Uh, I was not as happy in the first half. I was happy with the defense, but not happy with the... I mean, it's like switches back and forth every week. It's really goofy. It does, uh, right? It kind of like... It, it's like a yo-yo. <laughs> yeah, and it's not the offense played bad. They are just making stupid mistakes. Um, uh, Jeremiah Smith's fumble. I mean, look, he makes so many amazing plays. You can forgive a bad play here and there. But, you know, he gets he takes a screen, yeah. takes it, what, was 30 yards or something. And then uh, I remember he heard me on the phone because uh, my feed was a little head of yours. And you heard me on the phone. Oh, yeah, go, Jay. Go. No, no, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what happened? Oh, no. <laughs> and, um, 
course, he had just got the ball plucked out, and then Donovan Jackson had a chance to fall on it. He tried to pick it punched up. Down. They like punched that ball out on him. That's what they're trying to do, and um, they are. Yeah. They are. Iowa's defense was good. They were tough. Yeah, well, we are the first team in 27 games to score on the opening drive against Iowa, and then we chose not to score again this rest of the first half for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. So I wouldn't even say it was a struggle. I felt like we were able to move the ball pretty much at will, and we would do something like a penalty. Uh, it might not have been a penalty, but it was It was always felt like it was something that there was like we did. There were many penalties. Yeah, there were it, very many penalties, but it's something that screwed it up. Yeah, it'd be like, uh, uh, um, what's his name, Howard slipping on the field on, on second down and getting a loss, or Jeremiah Smith fumbling, or um, mm-hmm. I, I think the interception was in the first half. Uh, just yeah, just yeah. Make, making stupid mistakes, you know. And Yeah, yeah. And I got to be honest, I expected Iowa to have at least one interception on us. So that was kind of when I saw that happen, I was just ready to be like, you know what? They do that. They're Iowa. They're known for this. They're really good at this. I can wipe this one away. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. I was mad at Will Howard for that one. Um, Will Howard makes yeah. a lot of good plays. It's not that I think he's a bad he quarterback. But... That one, but he just stared. It looked like he stared to make it down the whole time, and he just lofted the ball late, very late, mm-hmm. uh, where Emeka had to like just wait for it, but the defender could jump in front of him. Um, another yeah. concerning thing is like uh, the deep ball. I want to comment on that real mm-hmm. quick. What's we're talking about Will Howard? Um, Jeremy Smith's a freak. We all know this. He got behind the safety. Uh, he he was. It was should have yeah, been six. He was backward. Yeah, if CJ if that is CJ Stroud throwing that ball at six every time, Whew, the problem yeah, that'd is be beautiful. It would be the he won today, by the way. CJ Stroud in Houston, Texas, won their four and one right now. Um, nice. The only the problem is is he, he threw it and he, it just lofts up in the air because he doesn't have a great deep ball. So Jeremiah Smith has to turn around and wait for the ball like a punt, and uh, so he couldn't get in the end zone, but. I mean, I make the jokes. He's eating sandwiches. He's doing his taxes. He's just waiting for <laughs> that ball. All the time and, in the world. Yeah, and he catches it, and he makes a big play out of it, but it should be six. I think we still scored in that drive anyway, but, again, mm-hmm. it shouldn't be that much of a chore. Uh, Will Howard's deep ball is just – it's not It's not great. I don't know what to tell people. I'm not trying to knock him, but it's not. It's a little bit concerning. Uh, Ice mm-hmm. Shark from the uh, the best darn I'm, gonna, I'm not going to curse on your show, but the best darn podcast or whatever it's called. Uh, Dan, uh, he's you. a good guy. I'm, he he saw he brought it up initially that the Will Howard's downfield passing is not great, but you have to have give and take. You understand he's a B plus quarterback who's a distributor and a facilitator, and that's what he's going to be. Yes, yes. He's he's not back there to be a. He's never going to be a pro quarterback. It's not not in the cards. He's he doesn't not. have the no. Yeah, and he's that's, not. That's okay. The way it too, he's he's everything we need him to be. There are enough superstars around him who will make it happen as long as he can get them the ball. And the majority of the time, he's able to do that. Yeah, he would have never worked if Ryan Day were calling the plays. Because Ryan Day demands yeah. NFL quality quarterback play. Chip Kelly's mm. offense does not demand that. Uh, mm. So he's that's but he's an everything. Interesting take. Yeah, that, well, that's something I hadn't true. really thought about before. Well, he's not going to go. It is. But... Yeah, he's not taking the ball and shotgun, stepping back, two step drop, and then just dissecting defense and can throw it anywhere on the field. That's just not Will Howard. But yeah. Will Howard can absolutely run the misdirection game of Chip Kelly. The you know. Yes. So and he's doing it really well overall, very efficiently, very well. And he's only turned the ball over three times this year so far. So. You know, it's five games, three times in five games. I mean, you don't want to see that keep going up. He did it against Michigan State. He did it against Iowa. As the competition gets tougher as the next three weeks, because we got obviously Oregon, we got Nebraska, we got Penn State. That's some very tough competition. Um, yes, it you can't, is. You can't, you can't see those mistakes continue, especially as we go to Eugene next week. Oh my goodness! Yes, that's going to be such a a big game. One of the other things I really liked about yesterday's game was our run game. Our run game, I don't know. It was working. <laughs> and especially knowing Iowa's defense is tough. They are physical. They are built to stop the run. And I think you were saying they were they were ranked third in overall run defense. Uh, Somewhere around there, somebody said, yeah. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I also, somebody, I also I saw somebody say they were top 20, so I don't know where they were. They were in that range somewhere. So. Mm-hmm. So they were pretty high up there. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was it was a statement that Ryan D was probably trying to make, or you know, Chip Kelly, but probably both of them together, just to say, "Look, we're still going to run on you." They have to. I mean, it's not going to be. We're mm-hmm. not going to go out there and throw for three hundred eighty yards and four touchdowns. Yeah, he had four touchdowns. Don't get me wrong, but he hit on two hundred and five yards off twenty one completions or whatever it was. He's not going to be out there. He's not Dan Marino. So you got. We brought in uh, Quinshawn Judkins for a reason. Uh, brought in yes. Seth McFarland for a reason. Yep. So they they, they know they're gonna their bread and butter is gonna be to run the ball, and they better be darn good at it. Um, but to be honest with you, yes. to win championships, you need to be good at running the football, even if your run game kind of consists of the horizontal pass game, which it, by extension it does with us, a screen game and things like that, the yes. RPOs and things like that. Um, is an extension of our run game. So our whole offense is predicated around the run game, technically. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a run game, I would say it wasn't explosive or flashy, but it was efficient and it got it done. And major yes. kudos to the offensive line. I thought they were pushing Iowa around. So I thought they did yes. a great job. Um, Josh Fryer had his best game as a Buckeye. I've been on that guy for two years now thinking he's you know average at best, but he had an excellent game against Iowa. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's talk about someone else who had their – Best game as a Buckeye, probably. On the other side of the ball, Sonny Styles was on fire yesterday, yeah. too. I know a lot of yeah. people were talking, you know, legitimately asking questions. Should he be out there? He kind of looks lost. He's not, you know, going, he, he's not diagnosing the play correctly, and, and he's not where he's supposed to be. He takes bad angles. And then yesterday, he kind of made up for all of that. Yeah, you just wonder if they simplified his responsibilities a little bit. But it was, I mean... Yesterday was tailor made for him. They knew what Iowa wanted to do coming into the game. Uh, yes. It was. I'm not going to say that it's, it's ever simple, but in terms of your football, uh, you know, knowledge and things like that, when you're a player and you see offense after offense or offense, Iowa's fairly simple. Um, That's true. Caleb, That's true. Caleb Johnson is coming in. He's one of the best rushers in the in the country, and they knew. They say, okay, look, we're, we're going to lose. We're going to make Cade McNamara beat us. And uh, mm-hmm. they stuffed Caleb Johnson and in Sunny Styles had two tackles for a loss. He had seven t- tackles and he's just in the backfield consistently. Uh, mm-hmm. He was in, he seemed like he was in good position consistently. I think he I mean, he had a couple of little missteps. I don't but if you're making plays, I can handle a couple of little missteps. If you're exactly. if you're not exactly. doing anything at all and you're making missteps, then we got a problem. But uh, a mm-hmm. little bit of uh, when you when it comes with high production, it's all good. No, don't worry about a couple of mistakes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I bet yeah, he gets a silver yeah. bullet award, by the way. Oh, nice! I didn't, I didn't see who got that, but that is. I don't know who got. Big. I don't know who. I, they haven't said who got it. Yet. I just, I just bet. Oh, he does. Okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. I missed the bet. Oh man, <laughs> changes the whole statement. <laughs> yep. But it would be well deserved if he does get it because, yeah, we heard all this hype about Caleb Johnson, and they just. Put him away until the very end of the game where he was finally able to break off some longer runs and kind of, you know, jack those stats up a little bit. But that's our second team. Yeah. yeah, against our second team. But he did not make an impact before then. And that was incredible to see. Yeah, defense played their light. They played their lights out on the run. And uh, the the um, uh, Talik Williams being back was huge, clearly. Oh, um, my goodness. Yes. Yeah, he's a. Not just huge metaphorically, he's a huge man. So uh, he's he's good to have in the middle there. He's disruptive, obviously, and it just helps our linebackers. Yeah. That's probably also what contributed to Sonny Styles having his best game is having Tyler Williams back after mm-hmm. missing two games. So um, mm-hmm. very very happy with that. Uh, we're going to need him next week, that's for sure. So yeah, um, yep, absolutely. And for a while there, I was getting frustrated because Kate McNamara was. Kind of playing a good game. We hit we hit him a lot in the first half, but he was completing passes, yeah. and it's hard to be frustrated. With it. I mean, as a fan, you get frustrated by it, but you, you understand the defense is a give and take. And the defense was like, "Say you you, you can have Cade try your best, and we can hit him and get to him. We feel like eventually he'll crumble, uh, but mm-hmm. we cannot let we cannot let Caleb you know run us off the field." So. Yeah. They were very adamant about stopping Caleb. I think at one point he had eight carries for 19 yards. He had just done nothing for yeah, I think roughly that was three and a half quarters. 
Uh, yeah, his first half. I think I think I even heard somebody say he had 20, 20 runs for about twenty yards or something like that. Which yeah, he was. He and was, then he, he ripped yeah. off a couple big ones and you know again jacked those stats up. But <laughs> yeah, overall I was very happy with the defense. I feel like they stepped up in a big way, especially mm -hmm. you know stopping that run. I know the big question was around the linebackers. Are they going to be able to to do what they need to do to be effective with that? And I feel mm -hmm. like they stepped up in a huge way. Even, you know, Davison Igbenosin walked away with an interception, which again... You were so um, happy. I was so happy for him. I love, I love these stories where players are maybe not performing up to the level that you expect them to be, and then all of a sudden they come out and they just smash it. And mm -hmm. it makes me so happy. It makes me so happy every single time that happens. So I was over the moon ecstatic about <laughs> Davison Igbenosin's interception there. I want to clear something up there, too. Um, for those fans who are wondering if he got away with a P.I. there, he didn't because the ball got tipped. And yes. the ball gets tipped, yeah. it's every man for himself at that point. Um, so, honestly, I forgot who tipped it. I, I think it was Cody Simon, but I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me. Um, somebody, whoever tipped it, basically saved the penalty there and saved uh, – because, you know, the, on, on P.I. calls, they always call it basically when the play's over. So yeah. if the if that ball had just been incomplete and then or uh, whatever or picked off even you know uh, without it being tipped they probably would have thrown the flag and we had 15 yards going the other way so or if half the distance to goal wherever they were I can't remember where they were on the, mm -hmm. on the I know it was almost a pick six and then Caleb Johnson saved that but um, I was yeah, hoping for the did. pick six but you know the fu the funny thing is is we played great complimentary football yesterday because. What happens yeah. is we finally, when we got up 21 nothing. that's when I was like, okay, the offense is humming. They're getting in the end zone. Defense can finally pin their ears back because they can't. I thought it was funny. Iowa continuously just didn't want to leave their identity. They're like, no, we're going to try to run the ball. We're down 21 nothing to a very high-octane high, high, high offense and a tough defense. We're not going to – we're not we're, – we're, if Iowa gets behind, they are screwed. They don't have a game plan to come back. They don't have a quarterback yeah. who can sit back there and just bring them, put, throw them back into the game. It's not yeah. going to happen. So they don't have receivers who can get open. They don't have a. They have a great tight end. Uh, you go ahead and say his name. I don't like saying his name. So Lachey. <laughs> Lachey. <laughs> I called him Lacey all day just because I, I didn't want to correct myself. Um, <laughs> something else. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and something else. Um, but uh, th that being said, uh, a lot of Buckeye fans are still hurt that we took Joe Royer over Luke. And maybe they, mm -hmm. maybe they're, maybe they're right, but at the time, Joe Royer looked like the better prospect. Mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. happens. I don't think I don't think Jim's sore about it. He's had a good career at Iowa. So. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, overall, I mean, great game. I'm very happy with what the Buckeyes did yesterday. What they showed us. Mm -hmm. I feel like we saw what we needed to see mm -hmm. as we roll into this big game against Oregon this weekend. So. <sighs> We're finally here. This is the big one, the one we have all mm. been waiting for, the one that has been circled on the calendars, talked about all off season as kind of being that big matchup. And we roll into this game. What do we have? It's a number two against number three matchup. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's happened before. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can it get any bigger? <laughs> one versus two? Yes, they can. Okay. But still, it's it's in the game we've been waiting for. Oregon has just been... It's the biggest game of the Big Ten so far this year by by a mile. So. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes. And who knows? Maybe we'll see it again in the future. But I'm super excited, but also very mm. nervous as we are rolling into this game because Oregon Not has had their games where... They looked a little shaky, but they pulled it out, and then they've kind of been rolling since then. So, but, yeah. So, how are you feeling about it? I missed that because I was talking. <laughs> how dare you not talk on your own show? Jeez. Um, I know. That's it. Folk in that card. No. Um, but I'm not nervous at all, actually. But you know me. I don't get butterflies till like, five minutes before kickoff. So, this is how no. I and here I am. My nervousness just builds all week long. I I know that if we lose, it's not the end of the world. They still could win the it Big is, Ten. They, no, it's it's not. But they could <laughs> they, <laughs> they could uh, they could still win the Big Ten. Still go. To, they're still probably going to go to playoffs. Um, That's true. But 
obviously you want to win all these games. I think yes. we're legitimately the better team. I really do. But mm-hmm. flying out west is tough. Oregon so tough. is, yeah, Oregon's, you, you wouldn't know anything about that, but uh, <laughs> flying from Ohio to out never, west. You, never fly <laughs> east to west or west to east. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you. I will say, you. I will say, east to west is easier in a sense than west to east. All right. Well, I'll take your word for that because I've never done it. My so, you, yeah, you, you've done it. I haven't. Um, so, I will say that it's it's the traveling's tough. It's going to be a tough atmosphere. It's a great atmosphere for football, college football. Um, yeah, it's a great environment. A great they place have to watch a game. They have a veteran, good quarterback. And Dylan Gabriel. So veteran, so experienced. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things that scares me the most, I think. It's going to be an interesting because we have an extremely veteran defensive line and an extremely veteran secondary. So Yes, yes we um, do. That's going to be the interesting battle there. Uh, we mm-hmm. And it, it it's, it's pick your poison with him. I mean, I'm not saying he's Michael Vick, but he can run and beat you with his legs and keep drives yes. alive. He's got a really good uh-huh. mid-range passing game. Uh, he's a little bit of a check down Charlie, but that's the thing. So is Tom Brady. <laughs> and Tom yeah, Brady won a few yeah. games. <laughs> um, Just a few. <laughs> that's, but that's why he's been so successful. He can make big plays, but he will just take the, what the defense gives him and move you down the uh-huh. field. So I think they're going to challenge our linebackers in the zone quite a bit. And our linebackers uh-huh. haven't been steady in pass coverage at all uh-huh. or in the zone. Uh, when it comes to stopping the run, we can get it done. But, y- I mean, y- you can't just go into a game like Oregon and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to stop the run and let Gabriel try to beat it because he will beat you. You know, he's, he's good. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Dylan Gabriel, uh, transfer quarterback, he did, what, three years at UFC? And- U- UCF. Or- no, he, was, he, wasn't UCF. At, he, was, he wasn't at UFC. No, he never fought anybody. <laughs> <laughs> UCF. <laughs> Him, him and Conor McGregor used to go at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then he he went from fighting to uh, yeah. the Sooners. <laughs> what a transition that was! <laughs> uh, ironically, UCF's or UCF's um, uh, mascot is the knight. So when they fight, so I mean, okay, just okay, okay. The Golden Knights right. they're called. Nice, nice. Yeah, so he did three years there. He did two years at Oklahoma, and Mm -hmm. then he transferred to Oregon. I heard the rumors of why he transferred were he was looking to join a team with playoff contentions, and he didn't see that coming with uh, staying at Oklahoma. He's a smart guy. (laughs) He's a smart guy. He is a smart guy. He's a smart guy. He's kind of like, you know, steadily moved up that ladder there, and now he's at Oregon, a premier program in the whole, in the entire country. I mean, you don't get ranked. And he will be, he will be playing on Sundays. I don't think know if he'll be a starter or anything like that, but he, Mm -hmm. an NFL team will draft him and he will make an NFL roster. He's, he's a good player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned he's veteran. He's got over Mm -hmm. 16,000 career yards so far. So he's played a lot at everywhere that he's played. And Mm -hmm. that experience brings just knowledge. You know, he won't get freaked out if stuff isn't going his way because he's just got that experience. So that makes me nervous for sure. Plus, he's surrounded by a cast of also incredibly talented players around him. I mean, Oregon's got some great receivers. They have a really good running back. Um, Offensive line has been gelling from what I've heard on their team, too. And then their defense, you know, they make stuff happen as well. It's Mm -hmm. really crazy. I was digging into some of the stats because we do have a common opponent. They played Michigan State last, uh, this past Friday. And it's really, I don't know, I was looking at these. I was getting a little spooked out. Of course, it is spooky season. But (laughs) I was looking at these and it was a little creepy because they were so similar to the Ohio State game versus Mm -hmm. Oregon. So I actually texted you some of this. What was your response to that? (laughs) Doesn't bother me at all. Um, I just think Oregon and Ohio State are two most comparable teams in the Big Ten, followed by probably yeah. Penn State. Um, mm. I mean, Drew Aller is a solid quarterback. I wouldn't say he's quite lived up to the hype, but we'll talk about that another week, obviously. Um, yes. But I, I definitely feel that, uh, you know, this is the biggest challenge left on Ohio State's roster, roster, a schedule. Yeah. And, um, not to say there aren't good games ahead of like Nebraska and Penn State are going to be tough games. 
Uh, and always oh, the, yeah. the game, the team up north is always going to be a challenge, no matter what they look like. I mean, just no matter what, yeah, yeah. Uh, even though, she, but I, thir- by the way, I'm going to mention it since you love your rose colored glasses and everything. I thoroughly enjoyed the whip and Washington put on the team up north. <laughs> I enjoyed hearing about that. I was not watching that game, but oh, was I, so I was at my buddy Matt's watching that. Ohio State game with Lisa on the phone. And uh, w- once she had to go, I was, Matt turned to Michigan. I want to watch. It. And they got down 14 nothing, and I just didn't thoroughly. And it was like, okay. And then they came back, and I was like, oh, geez, if they, if they went up when it's going to be tick. Um, yeah. They don't, have a, they don't have a quarterback on, a, on that roster. Nope. They don't have one. It's as simple as that. They just don't have one. Um, we have several. They have none. But I think it's yes. funny they're laughing at us about the Will Howard situation. I take Will Howard 10 times any day of the week over anybody they got. Yeah, same. Um, Will Howard is exactly what we need him to be. They would take Lincoln Kaneholtz right now as their guy, easily. So yeah. Anyway, then enough yeah. of that, but it was fun to watch them lose. It was a great Saturday of uh, top top ranked teams losing. And, uh, they lost. Anyway, Alabama lost. Tennessee lost. Uh, Tennessee lost, yes. All Miami bad. came this close. Uh, right. But... <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, obviously, there's about well, USC, USC to Minnesota. Yeah, it, was, it was fun. Yes, yes, um, USC lost as well. I, USC's a fraud. I don't care. Um, anyway, but that being said, going back to this game, like, look, I, I think what you're going to end up seeing from our defensive perspective, since we're talking that side of the ball, is you're going to end up seeing a lot of bend, don't break. I, I just don't. I don't think there's one thing you can do to focus on to take out, take them off their game. You're just going to have to allow them some of the field and not let, let them in the end zone. That's the only yes. way. But you're talking about yes. them in Michigan State versus us in Michigan State. What I the, the the major thing you can take away the stats could be similar, but the the major thing you can take away from it is that they beat them by 21. I understand it's a late touchdown by Michigan State, whatever. Yeah, they beat them by 21. So let's say 28. I'll even be fair to them. So you late garbage touchdown. Uh-huh. Beat them by 28. We beat them by 31 at Michigan State. They beat them by 28. I'll, like I said, I know what the score was, but they beat them by 28 essentially um, at Oregon. You know, and, and it was on a short week for Michigan State. So, I mean, yes. If you want to say we're on similar planes, fine. But there's nothing they did that makes me think, oh, geez, they just mutilated it. We just pounded that team for them. We softened them up. We tenderized yeah. the meat for them, okay? And you got Dylan Gabriel making uh, several mistakes in the red zone that's uncharacteristic. I mean, he doesn't throw a lot of interceptions in his career. He's yeah, a six, he threw, he threw seven. Interception. Yeah, yeah, he's a six yeah. or seven interception a year type of guy, and that's not a lot. Mm-hmm. For as much as he throws the ball, that's not a lot. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, imagine like throwing for 16,000 career yards, you got like. 25 career interceptions. That's really good, you know. That's insane. So, yeah, and he threw for two in the red zone against Michigan yep. State. And Michigan State does not have a stout defense. So um, okay. I, I look at it and I say, I think there's a lot of openings there for us to go and honestly win a double-digit game, uh, have a double-digit right. win in, in Oregon. I think we're the better team in Oregon. I think we're more talented. I think we usually recruit better. Yeah. I think the addition yeah. of Chip Kelly has made our coaching staff more cohesive. I think um, the play calling has been excellent uh, by Chip Kelly overall. Yes. Doesn't mean it's always executed perfectly, but I the only concern I have about playing Oregon is we tend to beat ourselves at times. That frustrates the crap out of me. Um, just yes. like a dumb yeah. penalty or a stupid turnover that wasn't really forced. It was just something we did stupid. Like Jeremiah Smith, yes, the ball got punched out, but he's holding it like a, bre- a loaf of bread. You know, it's like, dude, tuck that's that. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So I look at it and say nothing they did against a common opponent had me worried at all. Nothing they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think our front four starting to find their rhythm to get pressure. I think typically what we do until we get a lead is we play with containment because we don't want to let quarterbacks – because quarterbacks typically do one-step, two-step drops against us and get the ball out quick. Uh, or they do RPOs, they do, you know, whatever, little misdirection. So we can't have the defensive line just racing up the field. But once we get ahead, if we get a significant lead on Oregon, we will pin our ears back and go after the guy. So, um, yeah. and, and seeing some new blitz, blitzing wrinkles in the, in the Iowa game from Jim Knowles, from the safety coming deep back and things like that. I think we're a more physical football team than we've been in years. I think we're, 
I'll give Dan Lanning his credit. Oregon's a physical team. I just think we're more physical. But we'll see. They could prove me wrong. But I, I think our offensive line's more physical than it's been in years. I think our defense wears people out. I think we have speed all over the place. I don't think they've even seen a team or played a team that's anywhere near the speed we are. Um, uh-huh. We got two two All American style running backs that just you just don't quit. It's like okay, Henderson doesn't have to get worn down because he can go for six carries and he's out. Uh, they and, yep. and Henderson can also pass pro. Judkins, same thing. Six yep. carries, he's out. Don't worry about it. And then Will Howard can even carry the ball a little bit. Although somebody yep. needs to tell Will Howard, dude, you have two All American running backs, hand on the ball, don't hold on to it on his own read unless it's wide open, unless yeah. you got an ocean of feet green in front of you. Get the ball to the running back. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah. thought he was being a little bit too too happy to keep it in the, in against Iowa. Sometimes I was like, well, stop keeping the ball. But yeah, uh, yeah I, there's nothing they do that this scares me. I'm not saying they're not a good team. I'm not saying they can't beat us. That's not what I'm saying. I hope people understand that when they hear this. I am saying there's nothing they do that makes you go, oh, geez, I don't even know how we're going to stop that. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm feeling good with the fact that. Our defense is looking so solid. Like you said, we have two running backs we can trust. Our core of wide receivers is amazing, so I'm not even worried about that. Will Howard's done everything we needed him to do. And I I do think it's still going to be a tough game. I think um, I'm still going to be nervous, but hopefully anybody else listening can listen to this and hopefully feel a little bit better after hearing all those things as well. So it's going to be a tough matchup for sure. I cannot wait. I'm super excited, probably equal parts excited and nervous at this point, but I'm, I always, I'm just looking forward to watching these Buckeyes play again. It's going to be so much fun. I'm curious to hear what everybody watching, what are your thoughts on this game against Oregon coming up? Do you see anything differently from how I see it or how Corey sees it? Go ahead, drop us a comment below. (laughs) I love reading through all your comments and responding back to those, uh, both here on YouTube and then on Twitter as well. I like to post a couple tweets throughout the week and then just hear what everybody's thinking about the game, uh, both kind of before the game and then day of too. But any final thoughts, Corey, before we wrap things up for this show? Well, guys, Saturday is game six. Yes. Halfway yes, through the regular it season. Is. And it's the biggest game of the year thus far. Yeah. Um, get. I mean, I say this all the time, but I mean, I I can't tell you, and this is a little soft spot for me, how much I miss watching football with my dad. It mm, is yeah. horrible to not watch football with him. It's lost a little something for me. So please, when I say this with experience, gather your friends, your family people closest to you that love football just as much as you, especially Buckeye football. And yes. do your best to enjoy these games. They go yes. so quickly and then the season's over and then we got to wait eight months. And I tell you, um, I I will never take it for granted ever again watching it with those I care about. So please, yeah. please take that to heart. Win or lose, take it to heart and enjoy yourselves and get some great food. Throw a great, have yes. a great time. Absolutely. Soak that time up. Soak up our chance to watch these incredible Buckeyes play. I mean, history is being made in front of our eyes with a lot of these players as well, which it's just incredible to be able to to witness that and to see so much talent on the field at the same time. Like it's it's mind boggling <laughs> when I start to think about it. So, yeah, definitely soak the game up gather around, you know, all your fellow Buckeye fans, your loved ones, your friends, and make a good time of it. Like Hmm. Corey said, we we always want that win, but (laughs) no matter what happens, let's just take this time, soak up the game, enjoy it. Um, Before I close this out, Corey, if anyone wants to find you online, where can they find you? Please don't find me. I don't want to talk to any of you. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, at Scarlet Great CT on on X is probably the easiest place to find me. Um, I would say Facebook, but I'm rarely ever on Facebook. So, but <laughs> I'm on X, and I I like to post about football on X. So um, come find me and follow me. Let's talk some football. 
Yes, absolutely. Corey's also on the OHIO podcast on Sundays. They do a really great live show. So check that out too. They go a lot more in depth than what I personally go into. Um, but it's a show for fans, run by fans, really well done, a lot of fun. Uh, check that out. You can check it out live. It's on Sunday evenings or they also record it and post it up to YouTube. Um, there's links probably on their other platforms too. You can always catch that later as well. So uh, that's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you again so much for tuning in. I feel so honored to be able to share this time with you and to just be able to enjoy watching this incredible Buckeye football team. So that's all I got. I'll see you on the other side of this game. OH!